Hello, this is Arki, and guess what? I had a chance to sit down with Christian Sundberg and Melissa Denise and have a chat. So what we all three have in common is that we have we have pre-birth memories. And um, they are available um, on YouTube if you want to Google and on Melissa's channel. And I will leave them in the description below, the link to them. But yeah, we had a chance to sit down and talk and we will be answering six questions which we get asked a lot and we'll be sharing our perception on them. Please keep that in mind and yes, if you have any more questions, you can leave them in the comments. I will try to answer more and make more videos on them. Please be respectful and love each other and yeah, hope you enjoy it. There will be three parts, part one, part two and part three. Bye bye. Question number five, this is from RK. How vivid was your memory? RK, do you want to take that one? Oh yeah. And um, so how vivid was my memory? So that's what my partner and my brother they ask me all the time like how do you know that it's not you know it's simply a dream and uh, you know and memory how I know that because as a child I was going I think till the age of four I was this unconscious child you know just having this you know child experience you know asking questions learning about ABC and one, two, three. But then at some point, I became this conscious and I remembered this memory flashback, everything came back and I told my mom, like at the age of four, where I have never ever seen pregnant women in my life or have experienced like the death and afterlife or the concept of God or angels, anything like that. At the age of four, I didn't know what it is, but I told my memory to my mom, like how she delivered me in that room. And I saw her, her giving birth to me and the feeling she gave me and the, the protection she, she gave me and the, the guidance I also received not to forget about it. And I think, that's enough evidence because four years old when she consciously comes up to you and starts speaking like an adult that's where you know that that's not a dream because I get started getting flashbacks on that and as well as the dreams where they would show me what's going to happen to my loved ones, to my grandparents, to my father. Also, I didn't know the concept of death. I've never, I've never, I've never been told about it at the age of four. But I had a dream of my grandparents passing away, leaving the earth, but they are gonna be fine. My father as well, leaving the earth, but he's gonna be fine. So I didn't feel sad while I was telling that to my mom. Like this is what's gonna happen. But I wasn't sad. I was like telling her excitingly because this is the truth. Like, this is what's going to happen. Can you believe it? I remember this. And, you know, that's how I was telling her, like, can you believe it? I just remembered that I, this is the flashback and this is what's going to happen. But, you know, adults around me, my mom, she was like, oh, you just probably had a dream, you know, the dream. But I was telling them, this is not a dream. There is something that's changed here. I feel that there is something missing. I have to I have to help. I don't know what it is, but there is something missing here. And I, I'm sure you guys have been feeling that as well. Like as if you are supposed to know something, but you've forgotten about it and you kind of need to remember about it. So you go asking everybody. And I, I kept as a child asking everybody around me, every adult. So. But no one could give me the answers. And even if they gave me answers, I, I was sure that this is this is totally not it. I was also given the purpose behind of that memory. Why did I recall it? Why did I have it? Because of the during my childhood, I had to have that hope. I had to remember the words they said. Otherwise, 
I think I would I wouldn't want to live. I wouldn't want to be here because I didn't feel connected to people. I felt like an outsider. I didn't feel like I belong anywhere. But that memory, I was so attached to it and it felt so good remembering the the true love and the peace and enlightenment. So I kept holding on to that. And attached to it so it helped me to go through the life and through challenges because I think subconsciously somewhere deep inside it was giving me that comfort that it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine just be patient just wait just wait it's gonna unfold it's gonna go um you know the 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 challenges are gonna pass quick so I was in this waiting mode and I knew that that wasn't the dream. That was very vivid. But right now, because I'm no longer attached and I'm not looking at challenges like challenges and trying to avoid them, but going through them and I'm enjoying the moments now, that memory is slowly fading away. Picture wise, it's fading away. It's not as picture clear as it was in the in in my childhood. I used to like try to draw it, but but the feeling wise, it's still there. Whenever I recall that recall that memory, feeling wise, it's still there. I have so much love attached to it, but right now I'm not using it as comfort as I used to. And I'm not using that memory as an escape, as I used to. But just like the beginning of this character's life, the beginning of our kid's life. And yeah, picture-wise, it's not as vivid. It's slowly fading as, as every good memory I have. I don't have the, the clear picture of it, but I, I remember it. So. I can't deny it. And no matter what people say, and some people will, would just say, oh, you have a good imagination. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and no matter what anyone says, it doesn't cancel my memory, my experience, and the beginning of this character's life. So is it vivid? Not picture perfect vivid, like it's not HD quality, but yeah, feelings are strong around it because it was the first unconditional love I have experienced before the physical form of Arki that I can remember because I don't remember the rest, what was out there before that. Thank you. So I guess I'll dive in next, Melissa. So, okay, so for me, the, okay, this is really hard to describe, but the pre-birth memory for me is hyper real and totally broad like like earthly memories are very limited and specific this memory is very rich and connected to so many other things and it's like all happening at once from like i feel like it's even happening right now and also simultaneously it feels like it was twenty thousand years ago so i feel like it exists unto itself in a hyper real like soul level but what changes for me is whether or not I'm close to it or, or far from it. It's, it's like that. So the more that I'm focused on the human story and human thoughts and human activities, the further away it feels. Uh, like if I go for a couple of weeks and I'm just working a lot and I haven't meditated, it's quite distant. And it's not like, it's not like I meditate on it, but if I, if I practice meditation commonly and let go of the thoughts and dwell fully in the present moment, it's just naturally there. Like I, I'm, I'm naturally much closer to it. And I feel like not a day goes by that I don't think about like the presence of the veil and where I am in relation to it. <laughs> I just can't help but be aware of it and think of it. Um, but as for the, the experience, like pre-birth experience and that, you know, that kind of experience, there's no question for me. It's, it's, it's self-evidently real at a level that is like far deeper and more personal. So personal. So like, mm -hmm so intrinsically personal and holy that it is, um, you know, it's not, 
it's not up for debate for me. It's just whether or not it's close to me or far away. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. I would say for myself, if we mean vivid in a visual sense, my most powerful pre-birth memory that I've had for my entire life that has never left me was not visual. Now, I do have other memories with a visual element that may have happened in you know more physical realms i'm not sure i don't have all the answers to that and those have come back to me with time but my memory of the light was so far beyond anything that happens in a physical realm that we can wrap our minds around here now i have put visuals to it and then i tried to paint it and i put words to it i tried to write about it nothing even comes close and then sometimes like if like right in that state right before i'm falling asleep or if i'm deep in meditation or something i will snap into that state of awareness and i'll see something again but as soon as i come back it's like it doesn't make any sense it's these weird um what we would call shapes and colors, but they represent things that I can't even grasp here. And I know I sound completely crazy talking about I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but what I'm getting around to is that um, I don't want to be misleading and say that I have a, this vivid memory of being in a visual place because I don't, but it was so much deeper and so much more real that it is orders of magnitude more real than this life. Yes. And it is, it is so real that it is, um, it's more than just a memory. It's like, it is me. My exactly. memory of the light <laughs> is me. It is who I am. Mm -hmm. It is the number one thing that I've cared about my entire life, stretching back to when I was two years old. It's the number one driving force of my life. It has been the reason why I've made all the decisions that I have made has either been about trying to get that connection to the light back before I understood what I was missing, or now yeah. it's about trying to embody that and express that and um, like talk about it, paint it, whatever I can to express it here. So that's how I would describe my memory. Anything else? Yeah. Um, I'll just add one last quick comment. <clears throat> so I, I had pre-birth memories that had visual element for sure, like defined visual elements. But the, the experience of the world as an external visual environment is something we learn on earth. Mm -hmm. So we expect that that's what reality is. It's a shared yeah. environment that you can visually see. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's not the fundamental layers of reality. So I'm just making that comment in the context of the question because people are looking for more of what we know on earth, but what we know on earth is just a way of experiencing reality. There is definitely sensory experience, but there's also forms of sensory experience that are not even imaginable on earth. Um, so I'll just make that comment really quickly. Yeah, you're right. You, I think you're absolutely right. It's spot on. Number six. This is Arhi's question. Why can some people remember and the majority don't? I'll give I'll give you guys the, the opportunity to answer that first. Go ahead, okay. Melissa. Okay, yeah. so I can get give my best guess on why this is the case, and I think it's because like we were talking about earlier to be fully immersed, to truly have this experience, we have to be fully immersed in it. And Christian, you can explain this so much better than I can, but um, part of the deal with being here is that we're not going to remember who we are. And so to fully take on those constraints, as you would say, that that's, that's part of what we're doing. That's part of the reason we come here is to not remember and to challenge ourselves in that way. Um, and I, but I, I think that maybe the people who have a memory of before, that possibly that's 
part of their purpose here. That's part of the reason why they came. They came and planned their life knowing I'm going to have this memory and it will affect me in such and such a way. I know for myself, having this memory of the light has, I mean, like I said, it, it, it is me. It's my entire life. It's, it's what everything that I've done has been about. And so I have to believe that I probably planned that. <laughs> um, but having a memory does make life more difficult in some aspects, I think, because you remember what you're missing. And so for me as a child, as a teenager, I was completely obsessed with how can I get it back? completely obsessed with it. I didn't care about the normal things that kids my age cared about. I cared about how am I going to have this experience? How am I going to feel this peace? How am I going to find this love again? What what crazy thing do I have to do to stimulate a spiritual <laughs> experience? And then also um, adjusting to the world. This world, like I said, was extremely difficult as a child simply not being able to um, communicate through thought concepts and just with downloads of information and then not understanding, well, my parent is all the way across the room and A, they're physically separate from me. They're so far away and B, that they're not picking up what I'm, <laughs> what I'm sending them here. That's my best effort at answering that question. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. So I, I want to make a quick comment about this. So I, I also remember um, asking to have some memory this time, but I also feel very strongly that it's not that one has to have made an arrangement to remember in order to remember. Um, I, I think that's really important to say because it's not like, like, I mean, I don't know how you, you guys say, but I feel very confidently we're not special. I'm not special in this way. Like we're just, Everyone yeah. is an amazing, powerful, spiritual being, <laughs> being here right now. And that is what we are. Okay. So now the question, why do some remember and, and some don't? Okay. So I certainly cannot even remotely touch the complexities of the veil. I don't understand all the veil complexities that that's its own thing. It's its own deep technology, its own <laughs> expertise. But um, I'll just say that the okay so the veil is organic and what i mean by that is it's not just like some firm fixed hard rule ha ha you're stuck here now it's something that we wear on and in our consciousness and what you already are is your consciousness so if you can locate your consciousness it sounds simple and like wordplay or something but it's actually it's actually really important if you locate your consciousness itself and spend time with it just with your aliveness itself and your, the quality of your mind, the quality of your being and the quality of the sensation of aliveness in your body. And you spend time with that. It may come to you on its own that you are already on the other side of the veil right now. The earthly experience is happening in you, on, on you, in you. And the veil is simply the um, cloak. It's just a metaphor that you're wearing to permit this level of constraint. So now, so now why are some people not others? I, again, I can't speak to the veil itself, but I'll just say that we are at varying degrees of association with the forms of earth. So many people are deeply, deeply associated with their thoughts and with the stories and with their interpretations and with the, the feelings and the touching and the visual and the, and the next idea and the next stimulation and the next, next, next. <laughs> You know, what TV show can I watch now? What, you know, what, 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 what can I eat? What, what this person made me upset and on and on and on. And we just constantly focused in the content of the physical that. So the nature of the veil is such that the more we focus on that and the more we lose ourselves in our association with the story of the character, the deeper the veil is experienced as being. So those who are able to let go of that and fully with full alertness, engage the present moment and, mm -hmm. and explore and feel and know the aliveness that we are. As that happens, I feel that it is natural 
that aspects of the higher portions of ourselves will rise up all on their own. At least that's how I experience it. I don't, I don't experience it like I as a separate person go and get it. I don't, I'm not even trying to get it. It's just that as we experience what we are and, and not the thought, like we put down the objects, the shiny objects of our thoughts, put down the shiny objects and just exist and dwell in the present moment for its depth of fullness, those larger aspects of ourselves can arise on their own. And I feel that in general, that's true for everyone. Everyone is able technically then to, to know the deeper parts of themselves, even though there is an organic veiling occurring within each of us. RK? Oh yeah. I uh, yeah, absolutely agree with both of you. And I um, think especially with the part of it, you know, having a pre-birth memory didn't make things easier for you. Yeah. It probably even made it complicated because as a as a child I didn't know how to explain because I, w I didn't understand myself what, what it was. Or I tried to seek out that love and I felt this emptiness that there is something I'm missing, I'm missing something. And I've heard many I love yous, I like yous from my relatives, my mom, but it didn't feel like the love I experienced. So I would say, I would question the I love you. <laughs> And I would, I would try to win favor of my mom or other people, people please, because I thought maybe that way I can experience that, that feeling of this unconditional love and where is it? Or as a child, I remember trying, I, I was probably a weirdo, what people would say, and, I, and I wouldn't get along with kids because I couldn't explain to them the things I was trying to put words around it, like, how you're, you can think of something and you will get it. And as a child, I went explaining to other children, like you can think of something and you will get it. I got this toy by just thinking about it every night. <laughs> I was, you know, I, I was you know, bullied, judged, and that made things worse. So I started becoming timid, timid, more timid and shy and anxious about speaking up about my experience and things so um but i still had this feeling that i'm missing something and 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 i should find it but what turned out is it was already in me and as for the why some people remember and why some don't i think it's also part of the purpose because when I got out, as I mentioned earlier, I was very happy that I managed to remember the pre-birth memory because it kept me going. So I was very proud of myself. I was like, yes, I did it. Even though it made things complicated, but I did it. And I still can't figure out what's the bigger purpose, what's that missing thing was. I still get that urge, like I, I need to be completing something bigger, something I, I need to do, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. I still get that urge sometimes, but I, 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 I remember, I keep remembering that the guidance I kept receiving was just be, be at present moment be the now be the love and be the patience be the compassion and be yourself and that that is already gonna change the whole world so that's what i keep remembering and recalling as a guidance to myself like this is what i have to remember because it's easy for me to get lost in that urge of going out and helping and trying to save everybody or the feeling, I don't know what it is. It is something, but for I, I those just, who- So I want to interject this real quick, sorry. That hole that you're describing, that, um, that missing mm -hmm. thing that we're searching for, that we feel is, so first of all, everybody I think feels that to some extent, we all feel there's mm -hmm. something missing. Um, I just want to say that we need to acknowledge the incredible bravery 
and strength that it takes to even look at that in ourselves because that missing hole is profound it's mm-hmm. it's the it's the source isn't really missing but it feels like that which is most us is gone and mm-hmm. that alone prompts so much fear and in my own pre-birth experience i reacted in fear immediately i was like ah this is not happening <laughs> i am not i am not going to be in this state like there's no way because that hole is so profound so i'm just lifting up that um there 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 is an incredible beauty in the strength that you demonstrate that all of us demonstrate when we acknowledge and actually allow that hole and meet life even though it's there like even though that distance is occurring and we're feeling that because i'm just saying so many people run from it and cover it and so yeah. much cuz it prompts fear and then the ego and then all these ego layers and now we don't even remember it. we're just going to eat the next cookie you know or whatever mm-hmm. we can do to like feel better and just try to fill that gaping missing hole that we don't even remember that we're missing i'm just saying it takes great strength to face it and feel it and acknowledge this is the state we're in right now and become <laughs> fully allowing of the human um condition set mm-hmm. and when we fully allow that and um like just totally um, like welcome it and feel even that distance even that hole that's when the peace returns because it's not like it actually went anywhere <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I just I just wanted to encourage that because I I feel like someone is listening may that might help somebody. Yeah. Sorry. Car, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you so much for um for sharing that. I I, I truly appreciate it. 100% sure there will be someone who needs to hear it. Or there is that one. But yeah, in terms of the memories, I think it was the it was part of my purpose to remember them for some reason and as looking back at my childhood i think they they kept me going because the the message in my pre-birth memory was you're going to be loved and you're going to be welcome Lin- always remember that even though i had challenges in my life as this innocent child naive child i always believed that there was going to be a day when i'm loved and welcome because they said it i didn't know who but there was like they said it but yes it did make life a bit complicated and Uh, what I can say is uh, I don't think we need to remember I don't I don't think so right. I, I I I observe people around me and including my partner and you know my partner has absolutely absolutely no desire of questioning the other side the the afterlife the consciousness he's just very uh into his work and into nature into birds into talking about cars and this you know the houses and about the, the construction and things but he he I, i look at him and i i think i i understand this is this is the choice this this was probably the choice of these souls as well because because he is still enjoying the life and he he He, we have totally different you know uh, perspectives on everything but um he doesn't try to question things but still i have so much to learn from him and every day i learn something from him even though he you know even though some people don't have this spiritual transformations pre-birth memories new death experiences we still have so much to learn from each other because we are constantly teaching each other everything So I would say it's not necessary to remember and it's not necessary it's certainly not a goal for anybody to recall it or be attached to the 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 idea of recalling it I wouldn't say that's necessary unless you are called to do it unless you feel like I don't know unless your intuition tells you that's something that you need to do Uh, you need to recall it because there are many um practices available to you know recall your past lives rebirth memories or life between lives things like that so i'm pretty sure it is possible but uh, yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't get attached to the idea of 
um, why don't I have, why this person has, because it doesn't make a difference at all. It doesn't make anything easier or harder. It doesn't make anybody, you know, special or, you know, status-wise, you don't grow, you don't get rewarded, you don't get anything for it. And same, same in the afterlife, you don't get rewarded for anything. You are not like, there are not no levels of spiritual spirituality like there is no no such thing as oh this is spiritual good you are on level 10 you are not spiritual you are on level one <laughs> uh, there, there is no, no such thing as that so i wouldn't say you need to remember or even you know bother with it because if you don't you don't but keep on enjoying the life and every moment now as if it's the the new life because I now started fully understanding the meaning of free will because every moment now is like the reincarnation and I think we have I don't know I don't I don't think we have the fully explanation of reincarnation because I don't think we fully get it how it happens we think like it's a linear thing time where we reincarnate as this human and we have a break and then we go back what if it's not that way? What if it's all happening at once? What if you just lay down and you decide to go, decide to have five dreams? One on Earth, one on other planet, one on there, one on this, this and this. What if it's that way? You don't know. So I wouldn't question on, on you know, on that. But, but the, the magic of present moment now, that's where the free will is and you have this, you can reincarnate if you want to in the present moment now you decide who you want to be how you want to talk what how you want to behave what you want to do what hobbies you want to do who you want to become tomorrow the day after tomorrow the the after the moment now who you want to become so i think it's better to focus on the joy of life and the moments of now and what you can do with your free will and see what you can create rather than worrying about the comparison like why do these remember why don't i do have i don't have that i think yeah i i, I just want to say i agree 100 percent with that and i feel like some people uh seek to escape in this avenue but the thing is this experience right now is this is spiritual this is a deeply spiritual experience and um this is what we're here to do <laughs> mm -hmm. so i agree 100 percent that there's not really a need to go and uh you know try to remember but but uh, but we're free to do whatever we like so like you yeah. said if you choose to do yeah. that so be it that's great i also want to echo what both of you said that having a, a pre-birth memory does not make you special in any way it's just i think different experiences like yeah. we may choose to have different experiences there's some people may ask as they're coming in please let me remember this i don't want to forget this and mm -hmm. and also what you said christian that this life is just as spiritual it is and getting like you mentioned getting um as one of you mentioned trying to escape into the experience, which has been a big issue that I have had, huge issue mm -hmm. that I've had, wanting to just escape into the memories or into having some type of supernatural experience, when in reality, <laughs> we have to get into the physical experience and we have to deal with the contrast, the fear yeah. and the anger and all of the emotions that we have. And we have to go into that and fully immerse ourselves in that in order to discover that we are already what we're looking for. And so there's a reason why we're here and we don't want to run from it. No, I, I agree hundred percent. I think the escape, you know, the feeling of trying to escape makes you more and more unconscious. <laughs> and the more miserable you start feeling about yourself, but the more you become aware, that's where you, you gain that consciousness and the power and you start enjoying for the things for what they truly are and yourself for who you really are so i think yeah that's that's what 
a lot of people do in their life, and including me. It's a beautiful comment. Thank you. All right, one last question. Our bonus question number seven <laughs> is: What is one thing that you took from your pre-birth memories, and how did it impact you? So I'll let one of you take that one first. It was always giving me this hope throughout my life, even when I didn't know what the hell was going on in this life around the world on Earth with people and why things and are moving in the way they're moving. But it will always gave me hope that there is a purpose for me being here. Even in the in the darkest times of my life where I thought that's it, I'm quitting, I don't like it. But it gave me that hope. And I think it protected me in some more unexplainable way from a lot of things I could have turned into. I think the challenges in life, you have the, the free will. You can say, you know, you, you can, you get that pain. You, you, you feel like you, you know, people are treating you this way and you, you can get that, you can turn into a totally, you know, you can turn evil. You can turn to get, you, you can become that person who could tries to take revenge and things like that. But that memory was, giving me this comfort that of that hope and love and just to be patient. And even when my ego was would say, you are a pushover, people are walking all over you, or some people would say, people are bullying you or walking all over you because you are a pushover, or you are sensitive, you are this and this, and I still would recall that memory, feel a truth in that rather than everywhere else, everywhere, every from everybody I was hearing from and even from my ego, that, that there is there there was this truth that I am loved and I will always be loved and welcomed. So I kept on to that and I think one thing if I would say one thing that it gave me is the sense of home and sense of belonging and sense of sense of me. But I think right now I understand that I'm at home and that the home is not the afterlife and it's not it's not heaven, but the home is state of being and it's a natural state of being of who we are. So yeah, I I I'm very grateful for that memory because it showed me that the unconditional love, although it did mess up some of my, you know, some things in my life, <laughs> but, but I, I'm grateful because I, 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 thanks to that, I am where I am right now. And I feel at home. I don't, I no longer have the urge to escape this life. I no longer ha have the urge to escape the human experiences. But I'm fully enjoying it and I, I understood that the, the universe or the God, what other people would call, is not a being which is so separate. It's, it's a state of being and that's what we are because we are that universe. We are that whole. So I think that's, that's what it gave me, the, the, the peace and the feeling and the, un the full understanding of the word home. I am at home. And wherever I go, I am at home. Doesn't matter even if I end up in another country or on the other side of the planet, wherever I am, I am still at home. I am at peace. So I am very grateful for the, the memory that it, it kept me going. If, if I was asked again after this life, after finishing this character's life, if I was asked again, would I do it again? I would absolutely say yes. Or even if I was asked, because I thought about it, if, if I was asked, would you like to repeat Arky's life again, knowing that it's going to be entirely 
it's going to be exactly the same. I think I would say, yeah, yeah, of course, let's go. That's how much of a strength and trust it gave me and peace. So I'm very, very grateful to it. I think that's that's what I got, the, the feeling, the sense of belonging and sense of home. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I think there's two primary things that I took from my pre-birth memories and one of them we would see as a positive. The other one is not so obviously a positive, but for most of my life, the main overriding thing that I carried with me was just this knowing, this remembering of what this connection that I had, this overwhelming unconditional love and bliss and inner peace and connectedness and something that just doesn't seem to exist here. And I didn't understand that it was a pre-birth memory. I didn't have any of this knowledge that I do now. And it really just drove me to constantly seek this experience. With time and maturing and understanding, it allowed me and it kind of forced me into a situation where I finally realized what I'm looking for is within me. What I'm looking for, I'm already that. Like you were saying, I, I am home and I'm always at home. But it took me 29 years to get there. The other thing that I took from my pre-birth memory that I've sort of always had is just this underlying knowledge that love is the answer and that there is this other place where love and peace and harmony is the normal experience. And so when I was young, the collective consciousness, it has changed a lot. But when I was young, it was the, just this very like mocking attitude towards that idea. And that was sort of hard for me to deal with as a child, but yet it was strong enough that it never left me. That love is the answer, or love is the way um, I can't be hateful or angry towards people, even like criminals or murderers or anything like that. I would have a hard time understanding, well, how, how can you not love them? Because love is what will change them. And so I sort of always had this underlying knowledge about love. And I guess those are the two primary things that I took from my experience. Yeah, Melissa, what you just said about um, loving those who have done some wrong is something that I sensed as well. And I think it's one example of like, okay, so in my case, I had some pre-birth memory as a child, but then I forgot it for most of my adult life until I was 30. But especially as a child, I assumed certain aspects of the larger reality would be true here and they weren't. And that kind of feeling that love is the answer is a part of that picture. It's just, it's, it's understood. Love is what's needed. It's just, it's just what's needed. You know, it's that, there, yeah. So, but here, this is such an alien place, and not only because of the uh, limitations and the constraints, but because of where the collective consciousness is and because of the ideas that prevail here. And so I definitely sensed that, I think, more than others. Um, I think all of my life, in fact, I've had difficulty coming to terms with how certain things operate here. And for a long time, I didn't really attribute that to my pre-birth memory when I didn't remember it, but when it returned to me in my, when I was 30, and now it was like, oh my goodness, no wonder these things have not, so many things about earth have not made sense to me. <laughs> you know, there's just so many things I've expected and sensed, like this should be the way it is. You know, we should be, able, and you and I were kind of talking about it before we started recording today, Melissa, this, these feelings of like, we should be able to share what we feel. We should understand each other and we should have this connection with nature, this connection with the environment that it, I can draw on it and it can, it's a part of me and I'm a part of it. And we're missing that here. And like, we, we just sense that it's supposed to be there. Where is it? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So I know that I was definitely affected in that way. Um, I mean, I wouldn't even say by my experiences, just because I had some closeness, you could say to, you know, to those higher states of being, that was very natural. Like there, there's, there's so many things like that. Like the fact that we can't telepathically communicate seems ridiculous to me. Um, I get like legitimately irritated that I can't move objects with my mind, not because like 
I'm just, I, what, I'm, what I mean by that is like, I actually expect that I should be able to. It's not that I have some, oh, I want to be able to move things on with some power. No, it's just that I expect I should be able to do that and I can't. <laughs> anyway, so, but how did, how did it affect me when the memory returned to me? The, for me, in my case, one of the main things I'm here to do is to process very low vibration, a process of fear. And so in my case, the, the, the memory has helped me to, this is hard to articulate, but to experience and come to terms with the gap, the distance between that higher state of being and here, coming to terms with that and allowing it is no small feat. Um, and I did not realize for the first like 35 years of my life how deeply in fear I was living at every moment. I was resisting the limitation, resisting being human, I've mentioned this example before and it's kind of crass, but it's just one example. I remember peeing one day early in my awakening journey and realizing I was afraid of peeing. And why was, why was I afraid of that? Well, it was very simple. There was a sensation occurring in my body that I couldn't fully control. I mean, I could control whether I was peeing or not, but the sensation of it, like I'm very sensitive. I'm a very sensitive person and the sensation of it wasn't within my control. And I realized all of the human experience is full of so much sensory experience, so much denseness, so much uh, definition, you could say, like dense definition, consistent, rigorous, like unrelentingly consistent definition. That's one way to describe the physical experience, unrelentingly consistent. And I didn't realize how much I was resisting that in fear, like allowing the limitation. I was not allowing the limitation. So for me, one of the main major impacts for me is now I've have felt that distance and I seek to fully allow the gap. And in so doing, that is a part of the process of integrating the gap. I like, I like to describe it. It's like straddling the Grand Canyon, you know, like having one toe on the other side and one foot all the way on the other side. And I'm like, this is a really fun, maybe I'm crazy for doing this, <laughs> but I feel the opportunity and the potential. And it is huge. Like the, the opportunity and potential of coming to terms with and allowing the fullness and the depth of limitation here in the human experience is profoundly huge. And so being consciously aware of that is one of the main things that my memory helped me because I can, that's something I can, uh, I don't like the words work on, but something I can engage every day, no matter what the experience, whether I have the stomach flu, which is something I particularly dislike, or whether, uh, you know, I'm just saying that because I remember last time I had the stomach flu, I was like vomiting, laying on the floor and I was all delirious and I was fully allowing. And I'm like, this is human, this is human. Like, is it okay that I'm totally nauseated? Yeah, it's okay. I'm just saying it's an opportunity, all of the experience. So whether it's that or whether it's driving a car, whether it's, uh, you know, being in business meetings all day, whatever, the, whatever we're experiencing here, it, there is such an opportunity to allow it and to fully feel it and to fully experience it and to fully integrate it. So I, I think that's just one thing I would lift up for me that's been very impactful. That really, really speaks to me and what I've been going through over the past several months, personally. It's <laughs> like, it, it sounds simple. It is not like the, it is um, more difficult than I don't know what we might consider very difficult in earthly terms, because it means a quality of engaging and surrender and like a, like a, an allowing of fear in a way that is huge spiritually, even though no one may see it. <laughs> it's not a surface thing, but that quality, it, that, that way that we meet it is so important and we never talk about it. You know, like we're like, <laughs> it's just one of these things that's kind of always been dumbfounding to me. We live in a society where we like I, I feel like we should be able to live in a place where we can walk up to each other on the street and share this. What, how are you dealing with the limitations today? How do you feel? What's your, what's your experience? What are you actually experiencing right now? That's not usually how we engage one another, but, but, um, but I love that we can share it in this environment together because this is, this is real. This is the real 
communication, the real, a real conversation. There are other people who feel this way. Uh, even if they can't quite put their finger on it, <laughs> we're all dealing with this to some extent. And it is, uh, we, and man, if we can encourage each other and be there for each other and say, you know what, it's okay that it's messy. It's okay you don't have your arms around it all the way. It's okay that you feel afraid. It's okay that you don't like being sick. It's okay that you reject or have a problem with some circumstance. It's okay. It, and, and to honor each other in what we're experiencing and actually be there for each other without judgment for what we're actually experiencing. Wow, man. Let's do it. That's what this is all about. Watch the video until the end. Thank you very much. Um, please check out Melissa's channel and Christian Sandberg's uh, book. And uh, yes, leave your questions below if you have more and we can have a discussion. And always be respectful and love each other and stay safe. Bye bye. Take care.